Hi everyone and welcome to a new Romanian Coder episode. Today we are going to talk about Angular configuration files. More precisely, I want to show you how you can change the behavior of your Angular application by using a configuration file, pretty much like the application properties file in a Spring Boot application or the settings.json file in an ASP.NET Core application. Angular applications are becoming more and more complex, so there is a real need to change their behavior at runtime via configuration. What I mean by configuration, well, it's a simple file that might look something like this, a simple JSON with key value pairs. In this case, we have base URL as the property with the local host value and the lock level as another property with the error value. So the desired flow that I want to create is we want to start up our application, then we need some kind of mechanism to read and load the content of our configuration file from JSON and then make it available to, the, to our controllers, to our services and to our pipes. Before we get started, I want to remind you that if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and share it with your friends. We are going to start with an empty Angular project. I've just generated this one using the ng new command and I'm using Angular 8. This is the default application for Angular 8. So I didn't do anything special, just created a new Angular application and served it using ng serve. I have also created a new JSON file called app.config.json, which I've placed at the root of the project. Now you can name this file however you want and you can place it wherever you want. I just prefer to put it in the root because for me it makes more sense to have the configuration um, in a visible place. And here I've configured two properties, base URL and the title for our application. Of course you can go crazy with this and add as many properties as you need. The first thing that I want to do is I want to create a new directory over here and call it config. Then I'm going to create a new TypeScript class and I'm going to call it app config. And we are done. I'm going to delete the spec because I'm not going to do any tests. And in this class, I'll make it abstract. And now I want to map the properties of this class with the properties in the application config.json. So I'll have a property called title of type string and another property called base URL also of type string. I'm going to format this a little bit. Cool. So we have this app config class which will map directly to the application config.json because I want to inject this class in our controllers, in our pipes and in our services and to have, you know, um, IntelliSense and co-completion on it. Now we need to create a new Angular service. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to call this service JSON app config and we're going to let Angular do its magic. I went ahead and provided an implementation for this service to speed things up a little bit. Our JSON app config service extends app configuration. So this is pretty important. We want to separate the actual configuration information from the way in which you are reading that configuration. For example, in the future, you might want to read your configuration from a database or from a REST service. And all you need to do is create another service, extend app configuration and provide a concrete implementation for that particular method. We have a dependency on HTTP client. That's pretty important because otherwise you cannot read JSON files. And then we have this load method where all the magic happens. It's important to know that this load method needs to return a promise. That's why we have this to promise call after we make a request to HTTP get app config.json. If the promise returns successfully, then we map the data in the JSON to properties on our base class. So this title equals data title and this base URL equals data base URL. And that's all the implementation that we need to read information out of our JSON file. Then we need to go to the app module and make some changes over here. The first one is that we need to import the HTTP client module because without it, we cannot inject HTTP client components. Then we need to create an initializer function. 
the initializer function looks something like this. And basically all it does is execute the load method on our JSON app config service. Now remember again, it's really important that this returns a promise. We're going to use this initializer function in the app initializer provider to hook into the Angular Bootstrap process. Now we need to change the providers array and I'm going to add two new providers over here. Let's just import all the components here and then we'll go through each and every one of them. Cool, we have two providers. The first one maps the app configuration, you know, base class to the JSON app configuration service. We basically, what we're telling over here is that each time I'm declaring a dependency on the app configuration, you know, inject me the JSON app config service instance. Of course, this also helps, you know, increase the maintainability of the app because should you want to read configuration from a different source, you know, you just need to come here and modify which method you want to use to read the configuration. But the rest of your components just depend on app configuration, not on that particular uh, you know, reader. And then we have the second provider called app initializer, which is a built-in provider. And this is where all the magic happens. This is where we can hook into the Angular Bootstrap process. This is a multi-provider by default. We declare dependency on the JSON app config service. And then we use this factory initializer fn, you know, um, which calls the load method and then waits for the result of this promise. So that's the really important thing because the app initializer waits until everything is resolved and then the control flow, you know, continues throughout your application. What this means is that in all of your components, you can inject, you know, the app configuration class and it will be resolved. It will be populated with the values read from the JSON file. And you don't need to add any logic to check if they were populated to set timeouts or anything like that. You know, just use the app initializer provider because it was done specifically for this, you know, to hook into the bootstrap process and, you know, do your stuff before the application uh, starts. Now that we have these declarations in place, let's go to our app component class. And this looks something like this. We have declared dependency on the app configuration and we can use it to access the title and base URL properties. So pretty standard stuff. This is how you inject the app configuration that you read from JSON in all of your services and components and pipes. So pretty easy, you know, it pretty much looks like the, you know, environment property in a Spring Boot application. I fired up the application and we can see we have, you know, an error. We, we cannot read the app config JSON file, we get a 404 error. I wanted to show this to you because it's something that happens to me quite a lot when working with this kind of scenario. I'm going to go ahead, open the app again. And there are a couple of changes that we need to do to make this work. First off, I want to correct a mistake that I made. We have added our app config JSON, you know, in the root of the project, uh, but we should actually add it, you know, in the root of our source code. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move it under SRC. So make sure that you have it anywhere under SRC. Now I put it in the root of the source project, but you can put it in any folder you want, but it needs to be in here. That was my, my mistake. Then we need to go to the Angular JSON file and make sure that we declare it as an asset so that Angular knows to serve it as static content. We can go ahead and add SRC app dot config dot no, json and now we have added this file as a static file i went ahead reloaded the app and we can see that it's working we have the title here which is what you read from the config file and in the console log we can see that the properties were read successfully so this is how you can you know read configuration data from files and use them to change the behavior of your applications at runtime now i've tested this with angular 8 7 and 6 it should also work with uh, older versions although i haven't checked it out so you know uh, a note of caution over here and also don't forget that you can download the source code from github and you'll have the link in the description of this video Thank you very much for watching this video. Until the next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. 
Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.RomanianCoder.com Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye!